Freedom is a dream come true. With my liberation, my godly character is unaffected by the harsh circumstances of life. I step forward out of prison with three evident qualities. One, dignity. Two, humility. And a strong faith in Allah. It is true I was in prison. But I'm saying I was in prison right on schedule for the perfect plan of God, though I wouldn't have chosen those circumstances for myself. So now that um, you are released and uh, you are currently in uh, Senegal here, so what are you planning to do for yourself now? I want to further my education in the field of medicine because a higher and better education will enable me to, to serve mankind and my state, which is the Gambia, much better. You said um, you were not ashamed of uh, spending nine years in the prisons. So how would you define your prison life? In a nutshell, I entered the jail through the gate of truth and honor, and so was my exit by the same gate of truth and honor. I was an ambassador in chains. How were you an ambassador in chains? God gave me suffering not as a punishment, but as a purifying influence. I was in prison at the state central prison mile two, at the maximum security wing, confinement number one, single man cell number four, in total solitary confinement for nine good years, and in total communicado, where I was stripped of my identity as a military officer and forced to work as a common law prisoner. Yet, I emerged from prison believing that everything can be taken from a man but one thing, and that is the last of the human freedom to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances. Prison is the last university in the world for me then it certainly wasn't a lost time at all. Mm. But behind all this, what was life for you? Were you tortured or maltreated? Oh, yes, yes, I would say yes. I was tortured to almost death. They bound my feet in fetus and hands with, with handcuffs and made to sleep on bare, damp, cold concrete floor for two good years. And I was as naked as a needle. They just wanted me dead, but I refused to die by Allah's will. I would say that I experienced it all. There is a saying, to get to paradise, you may have to pass through hell. And the Gambian jail is a hell on earth. You were accused of being part of um, a group of uh, members of the ruling council then in 1995 that wanted to overthrow the then chairman, now the president of uh, Gambia, uh, Yaya Jame. That led to your arrest, detention, and uh, subsequent uh, jailing for nine years. So on that particular day, can you tell us what happened? I never had an eye for the chairmanship. I was content with my position. Jami was highly interested in clinging to power, as he has done today. Initially, during the preparation and planning of this coup, we had all sworn in to the Quran that we we're going to hand over after six months. So I felt I couldn't throw away my oath on God's name and the Quran and do something else different. They knew I wasn't going to kick in the face and cling to power. So they put it to get rid of me. So was my arrest. Now, after going through all this um, imprisonment, um, are you bitter now then? Oh, what a big question, Mr. Silla. Ah, no anger, no bitterness, no regrets. You see, anger is like rust in the heart. It destroys not the enemy, but him who is angry. So why do I have to help the enemy destroy myself? I will never do that.